the outback conjures some of the most iconic images of Australia to the rest of the world. The term outback, or the bush, defines any part of Australia removed from the more settled edges of the continent. In other words, it is outback from the larger cities that reside on Australia's coasts. The outback is typified as arid or semi-arid open land often undeveloped. From space, we see it as a vast reddish landscape. One can fly roughly 2,000 miles between Sydney and Darwin without seeing anything but the most scattered and minute signs of human habitation. The Great Sandy Desert is one such part of the outback. Maps of this land sometimes designate areas as lakes, but many such lakes are dry. In Australia's Northern Territory lies Uluru, also known as Ayers Rock. Uluru, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, might be the world's largest monolith. The rock appears to change colour throughout the day as the position of the earth changes in relation to the sun. At sunset, Uluru seems to glow a fiery orange-red hue. Caves at the base of the rock are sacred to several Aboriginal tribes and contain carvings and paintings. The art is distinctively abstract and representational at the same time. The Aborigines have been in Australia for between 45 to 50,000 years and have endured the harshest desert conditions the outback ever experienced. They survived in hunter-gatherer societies that created an elaborate culture of religion, storytelling, dance and other complex and nuanced social rites. While the outback may hold few people, it is still home to wildlife. The red kangaroo is native to the outback, hardy and well adapted to cover the open terrain. Kangaroos survive in the hot days, resting in the shade and licking their forearms to promote heat loss by evaporation. The majority of their activity is spent during the night and times of low light. Lorikeets and other members of the parrot family often flock near waterholes or billabongs in the wet season. The native kookaburra also inhabits areas of the outback and the eastern border of Australia and has been introduced to Western Australia as well. This bird is distinctive for its call, which sounds like fiendish laughter. After 1788, the English began to settle Australia as a colony. They were challenged by the outback's hot, dry conditions and imported camels to help them cross the deserts. The construction of the railroad in the early 20th century lessened the necessity of camels for travel and up to 20,000 camels were released into the wild. Over the rest of the century, their numbers grew in rural Australia. Today, the feral camel population is estimated to be between 600,000 and over a million. The English also brought livestock to the outback, raising them on large land holdings called stations. Sheep herding became very successful, making Australia a top wool producer. Beef cattle are also raised. In cattle musters, what North Americans might call roundups, cattle are herded by helicopter or off-road vehicles to loading points, where road trains haul the live cattle to market. Where rainfall permits, wheat is grown. Some margins of the outback are well known for their fine wines. But where agriculture is difficult, minerals provide an industry. The outback has rewarded careful prospectors, particularly in the opal mines near Coober Pedy.